Hi. In this lesson, we'll look at motional electromotive force. It's another aspect of magnetic induction that's um, quite important. So by the end of this lesson, I hope that you're able to explain the generation of emotional electromotive force. And the way to explain it can be done in two ways. One is using the magnetic force on charged particles. And the other way is using Faraday's law. And you should also be able to calculate the induced the EMF induced in by a moving conductor in a magnetic field. So to start off, let's recap uh, Faraday's law. So Faraday's law says that if we have um, a closed loop that encloses a certain area, um, there is an induced EMF in that um, circuit. And that uh, induced EMF is given by um, Faraday's law. So the EMF is minus the rate of change of this quantity phi b, which is the magnetic flux. So we've seen that in a uniform magnetic field um, and a planar surface, this reduces to BA times cosine theta, where the cosine of theta, well, theta is the angle between uh, the magnetic field and uh, the vector normal um, to the surface area. That's Faraday's law. And we've seen that's useful to calculate the magnitude of the induced EMF. Lenz's law tells us what the, um, or is Lenz's law is a useful way to figure out what the current direction is. It's essentially telling us that the induced current will oppose any change in flux. And the way it's doing that is by generating a magnetic field. So in a closed loop, you will generate a magnetic field if there's a current going. And so the direction of the induced current is such that the magnetic field due to that induced current opposes the change in magnetic flux that created the induced current. And so now on to motional EMF. Um, let's first look at how to um, get to this with Faraday's law. So here's the situation that um, we're considering. Suppose that we have these two metal rails here indicated um, in, in yellow. So they're metal rails connected by a wire on this side. And we're going to close that circuit, complete that circuit by um, adding this conducting slider here. Okay, um, and so that will close the circuit, so current can flow um, in the circuit. And we apply a magnetic field perpendicular to the surface uh, circuit, so it's pointing into the page right here. And so now consider what's happening as we move, we pull out this slider here to the right um, with a velocity v. As that happens, this area here, the area enclosed by this loop is increasing. And so by Faraday's law, that will result in an induced EMF in the circuit. And let's calculate that now. So suppose that we move the slider um, at a constant velocity V indicated here. Suppose that that slider um, has a length L and, and will actually uh, point the position of the slider um, from this side, left side of the circuit with um, X. So the area of the loop is then quite simple to calculate. The area is just x times l, this rectangular area here. But x, if we're moving at a constant velocity, is just the velocity times the time it took um, to go all the way from the left side to where we are now. So um, the surface area of the loop is, the area enclosed by the loop is vt times l. Magnetic flux then is simply the strength of the magnetic field B times um, the area of that loop. So that's B times BTL. And so now we can use Faraday's law to figure out what the magnitude is of the, the EMF. So Faraday's law says the EMF is minus the rate of change of the magnetic flux. So that's minus the rate of change of BVTL. Um, now, the magnetic field is constant. We're saying we're pulling this out at a constant velocity. And so also the length of that um, slider is constant. Uh, so that means it's, it's this constant here times delta t and delta t cancels out. So we find that this um, EMF that's induced is minus BVL. So this we get from uh, Faraday's law. And so this is now called a motional um, EMF. It's called a motional EMF because essentially it's, it's an EMF, an electromotive force or potential difference uh, that's, that's induced by simply moving uh, that slider. Okay, and so um, that minus sign essentially uh, tells us that the current will flow counterclockwise in this case, right? If the flux, if the current is going counterclockwise, our right hand rule tells us that the magnetic field will point out of the page. And so that opposes um, the increase in flux. Okay, so that's way, one way to do it. So this is now using Faraday's law, um, where we have the slider as part of a loop. We can also uh, get to this EMF in a different way by considering just the forces um, on the charges involved. 
um, and we'll find the same result. And so to do that, consider now this slider, the same slider, but not part of the rest of the circuit. So, uh, so not on the um, rails, essentially. So now we have our, our slider here. So it's just in this um, magnetic field that's pointing into uh, the page. And so as we move this to the right, Okay, suppose that we have positive charge carrier that makes it a bit easier to, to kind of uh, figure out the directions. Um, the force on our positive charge, it's, it's Q V cross B. So V cross B is pointing up. So that means essentially our positive charges will move upwards, any negative charges will move um, downwards. Okay, and so that's just from um, the, the default um, um, magnetic force on uh, moving charges. Right, and the moving of the charges is because we're actually moving um, the entire bar. And so, as charges accumulate, you'll actually start building up an electric field, and you'll you'll continue that accumulation of charge until the electric field essentially um, balances the magnetic forces out. Right, at that point, the accumulation of charges stops, and so then you know that the electric force QE must be equal to the magnetic force, which is QVB. And so that gives you a certain strength for the um, electric field. Now, if you have an electric field established, that will result in a potential difference between A and B. And so that potential difference is the field strength times the length over which uh, you consider the potential difference. So that's going to be E times L. The electric field is VB. And so we find, just as before, that that potential difference, or that EMF, is BVL. That's exactly the same as what we found before with Faraday's law um, when, when this was part of a circuit. Now it's not part of a circuit and we actually still find the same um, EMF. And so the source of, of this electromotive force is essentially the slider. By moving this, this conductor in a magnetic field, we actually make it act like a battery, right? Because, because don't, be wrong, don't be wrong here, the current actually is flowing from what we denote as the negative um, uh, the lowest potential to the highest potential. So it's just like a battery. In a battery as well, what you have is the, the current flows in a normal circuit. The current flows through the battery from the lower potential to the higher potential. It is the battery that is causing this electromotive force that's raising the potential of the charges. Here we're doing the same thing. We're raising the potential of the charges in that conductor by essentially moving it um, through a magnetic field. Okay, and so, so it's the slider that's the source of the EMF. The charge moves um, within the, within the uh, slider from low to higher potential. And so you can use it as a source of EMF in a circuit. If you connect it to a circuit, a current will actually flow. And just like in a normal circuit, the current flows from the high potential end of the battery to the low potential end of the battery. And then the current actually goes through your battery in the direction from uh, the lower to the higher um, potential. And so this is all, all consistent. It's two different ways um, of actually looking at the generation of this electromotive force. Now, as is clear from considering the force on the charges, we will always get the EMF, but we don't necessarily always get um, the current, right? And so suppose uh, that we have like a loop like this, but it's not a closed loop. It's actually open. There is a gap here in the middle. If you move this uh, loop in the magnetic field, you will still get the same force on the charges. So you will build up that electromotive force and they will accumulate at either side. However, since there is no circuit for uh, the charges to flow in, they will essentially not flow. And so there will be no current, no steady state current at least. Okay, and so um, if we represent this as a circuit, essentially, if, if we have a closed circuit, so this is like Faraday's law way of, of looking at motional EMF, we have a closed circuit with our slider being this EMF right here. And so in our EMF, again, current is flowing from negative to positive uh, potential or, or terminals, so from uh, low to high potential. In the circuit itself, it goes from the positive potential, the highest potential to the lowest potential. Okay, and so if we consider just the slider itself, the conductor itself that's moving in that magnetic field, well, then the only thing that we have is our source of EMF, right? And so in a battery, we generate this, this potential difference in the battery by chemical reactions. Here we can actually use the slider, move the slider in a magnetic field, a conductor in a magnetic field, and that will um, essentially also separate your charges, right? And generate um, that, that EMF. So that's what motional EMF um, essentially is all about. Um, and so 
The bottom line is that if you move any conductor in a magnetic field, essentially it acts like a battery. And that's purely due to the magnetic force on the freely moving charges inside that conductor. And so you can look at a few examples. Um, so here's the first example, consider an Airbus 320 flying to Mexico for spring break at a cruising speed of 275 meters per second. Estimate the potential difference across the wings and assume that the Earth's magnetic field is pointing vertically upwards with a strength of about 0.5 Gauss. And so here are um, some of the specs that you would need for an Airbus A320. Here's another example. A metal rod six centimeter long falls to the ground from a height of six meter. It stays horizontal and oriented east-west throughout the fall. If the Earth's field is again half a Gauss and oriented north-south, then at what rate does the potential difference between the ends of the rod increase? Then perhaps slightly more complicated, um, conceptually at least, a rectangular conducting, no, sorry, a rectangular conducting loop of resistance R, mass M, and width W falls under gravity into a uniform magnetic field as shown in the figure. First question is explain why the loop, why the loop essentially um, eventually reaches a thermal speed, and B, find an expression for that thermal speed. The final example is more in the um, uh, medical field. Um, and it's about measuring blood flow. So one way to measure blood flow um, when blood vessels are exposed during surgery is with an electromagnetic flow meter, which essentially is a device um, um, that surrounds a blood vessel with an electromagnet. And so now you create a, a magnetic field perpendicular to that blood flow. Blood itself is a conductor, a modest conductor. And so um, there will be a motional EMF that developed um, across that blood vessel. And so um, if you know that the diameter of your blood vessel is D, can you show that that flow rate, that volume flow rate, which is in uh, cubic meters per second, is given by this expression here, pi times the diameter times um, that um, motional EMF D over four B. Give those examples a shot and I will post the solutions in a separate video.